What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Punch Media. Today we are going to blur out an image in order to make one of our logos pop more at you. You know you always hear people say, hey, can you make that logo pop a little more? Well today we're going to show you how to do that. And if you don't want to miss out on any of the future videos that I'm putting out, subscribe to the channel right now. And hit that bell notifier and that'll make sure that you don't miss out. If you have any suggestions to videos that you want to see made, or perhaps you just really like this content, you should hit that like button. But I've heard people don't like the content sometimes, and so I guess a thumbs down is if you don't like it. But I think you will like it because it's gonna help you out. Question of the day, which program are you most comfortable in? InDesign, Illustrator, or Photoshop? Let's jump over to the tutorial right now. Whatever way that might be. See ya. All right, we're now gonna take this logo and what we wanna do is we wanna make it you know, as they say, pop off the background more. Right now, if this was sent in an email header with the image, it, it, everything kind of gets lost. You lose the focal point. So what we're going to do is we're going to blur this image. And I'm going to teach you how to blur the image and then also push the focal point towards the center logo. So let's head on over to Photoshop and we're going to do that right now. Now the first thing you want to do when you enter into your photo is duplicate this image layer. The reason being is you want to have a backup in case you're not fond of the changes that you make and you don't know how to get back to those changes. It's better just to duplicate the layer and you can always just delete the layer you edited. And you can do that by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard, clicking your layer and just dragging down and that creates a copy. So pull that copy up to the top and now we'll go Filter, Blur, and we're gonna do a lens blur. I like the way lens blur looks most because it gives kind of that radial bokeh look which makes it look a lot more intentional rather than just a very shabby looking blur. Let's increase the blur a little bit. Let's head up to about, I'd say that's a little too much. I'd say a 60 looks really good to me. And you can always change the shape of the bokeh, like do hexagons or triangles, but I'm just gonna leave it at hexagons for now. And we'll just click okay. All right, now before we do anything, we're gonna create another layer on top of that image layer copy and we're gonna pull out our brush. We do that just by hitting B on the keyboard or coming over here and selecting the brush tool. Then you wanna set your brush to 35% opacity and all black. And then just click and drag across your image. Now I'm gonna pull up the eraser tool. You can find that eraser tool by either hitting E on the keyboard or just coming over here and clicking. And I wanna make sure my eraser is set to 4000. Now go to the center of the image, click once, twice, and basically what we're doing is we're just pulling the focus towards the center. So you see how that's moving the eye towards the center of the image. And that's going to help our logo stand out more. So let's go check it out over within InDesign. So now you want to go over to the links panel, click relink and snag the new group blurred image. And as you see, that stands out so much more than before. Now, what I'm seeing here is we still have some of these details not getting as much really pop off of them. So what we can do is come over to our effects panel, do an outer glow. Let's turn that down a little bit, though it's not so obvious. Let's do, say, 10 pixels in size. Click OK. And now that's really standing off from the original image that we had. So let's just relink that and see what that used to look like before we had the image blurred and darkened. So much different, so much more distracting. So this allows the image to really stand out so this allows the logo to really stand out opposed to using the non-blurred and darkened background. So we'll switch that back again. Thank you again for watching this episode, learning how to combine InDesign and Photoshop to create the perfect popping logo. And once again, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that right now. Hit the like button, thumbs up is always appreciated. And don't forget to comment below if you have any questions or to tell me which program you're most comfortable in, Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator. I'll see you here on the next episode.